Hi and welcome to our next video. Here we're going to cover solidification cracking. We're only going to cover the points that we actually need to know to get through things like our C-SWIP examination or any other weld inspection course. Now when a weld is finished and it's starting to cool, as it solidifies, anything that has a lower melting point than the metal itself starts to get pushed to the center. This is as it stays molten, it stays fluid, uh, it moves to the hottest point and is normally the last thing to, to solidify into form. When we're talking about solidification cracking, we're, what we'll see here is sulfides from normally contamination within the base material get diluted and be forced to the center of our weld. This then creates a film down the center of the weld where a columnar grain growth builds up alongside of it. And what we have here is the grains aren't able to lock together because we've got this sulfide film. And because we're talking about sulfides coming from the base material, really any process that gives us high dilution. So something like a subarc weld, where we have deep and narrow welds, we mix in a lot of base material into a single bead will create more sulfide into that center line of that pass. So one way we want to get around that is by limiting the size of our welds if we think we're going to have an issue with this type of failure. Now when those sulfides form in the middle and the material contracts and cools, the grains aren't locked together because they can't cross that sulfide band. So when it cools and contracts, we get an excess of stress, which then pulls the center of the weld apart, which is why we also call this type of failure center line cracking. So on to our avoidance methods. First off, get rid of our sulfur. If we can reduce the sulfur levels down, we won't have the failure. Exactly the same if we have hydrogen just core cracking, we want to drop the amount of hydrogen within our system. Best way of getting rid of any type of failure. If we know we've got to live with some of the sulfur content by adding manganese, we can get the manganese to form with the sulfur and form manganese sulfates, which sit along the boundaries of each grain instead of forming a film. And it allows the grain structure to, uh, to bond properly. If we reduce the dilution in the processes, so make smaller, shallower weld runs, we're naturally going to mix less sulfur into our weld. Again, keeping the amount down so it's less likely to crack. So that's solidification cracking, centerline cracking, hot shortness. They're all the same uh, defect type. Uh, primarily seen in, solidification, uh, in submerged arc welding immediately after welding so this is happening straight away so it unlike with hydrogen cracking which happens once the material is cold you will see this during or immediately after the welding operation 